Tonight's homework is a review of a lesson that we did last week. Um, the best way for students to do the rounding is to draw the number line if they're not 100% sure. So for each number in the problem, they're going to need a separate number line because each number needs to be rounded to its nearest whole number. So if I look at A, I'm going to draw for a 3 and 1 tenth. I know that that's more than 3, less than 4. So I need to see the number line between 3 and 4. The denominator tells me that my number line is going to be broken up into 10 pieces. And so I have all the tenths. Your student can label them or not. It's up to you or up to them. And then I see that 3 and 1 tenth is here. So I can visually see that my number is closer to 3 whole. So I'm going to estimate 3 and 1 tenth to be closer to 3. And then for the next one, I'm going to use a number line again. And this time my number is 1 and 3 fourths, so my number line should be between 1 and 2. My denominator fourths tells me that I'm going to break my number line this time up into four equal parts. So you see how both numbers need their own number line. We're working between two different whole numbers and we're dealing with two different types of units with um, the different denominators. So in this number, I see 1 and 3 fourths, so I know this is 1 fourth, 2 fourths. Here's 3 fourths. When I put 1 and 3 fourths on the number line, I can visually see that that mixed number, 1 and 3 fourths, is closer to the whole number 2. So when I think about this problem, 3 and 1 tenth plus 1 and 3 fourths, I'm going to say it's about 3, because here's my first mixed number, and about 2. So my answer then should be about 5. So students are going to continue to do this work with the number line. So on problem B, they're going to do a number line between 2 and 3, and they're going to break that number line up into tenths. The next one they're going to break up into 4 and 5, and this number line they're going to break into fifths. The reason that I know what they're going to break each unit into is I'm looking at the denominator of the problem. For C, they're going to do a number line between 9 and 10, and then a number line between 5 and 6. For 9 and 10, they're going to break it into tenths. For five, between 5 and 6, they're going to break it into fifths. And for D, they're going to do between 4 and 5, breaking it into ninths. And then between 1 and 2, and breaking it into tenths. And then for E, they're going to do um, between 6 and 7, and this one they're going to break into twelfths, and then 5 to 6, and break that into ninths. That should help students at least get started. Once they have each number plotted on the number line, they should be able to visually see which it's closer to. One of the rules um, or one of the strategies we like to use is that if it's more than half of the distance between halfway, it should round up. If it's less than half, it should round back. So depending on the number, that's the best way. But as you can see in most of these, they can visually see what it is that it's closer to. All right, then on the back, they're going to do something similar, but they also have to think about here how to change improper fractions into mixed numbers. So again, the number line is going to be helpful, but step one should probably be to take each number and make a, a mixed number. So students should remember that when we have an improper fraction, we're going to do a number bond. The number bond lets us see what the fraction is composed of. In this case, we want to take out whole numbers. So when we take out whole numbers, we have to remember that one whole in this case is equal to third, third, three thirds. Excuse me. The reason it's equal to three thirds is because three makes a whole, so we'd need three parts to make one whole. So that means we're going to skip count by three thirds. That's going to take out one whole. Six thirds would be two whole. Nine thirds would be three whole, twelve thirds would be four whole, fifteen thirds would be three whole, and then because we only have sixteen, if we were to go three more, we'd be up to eighteen, and we don't have enough. So we're going to take out fifteen thirds, which is the same as five whole. The reason that I'm doing that is because I want to make a mixed number. To figure out what fraction remains, I say sixteen subtract fifteen, what remains must be one third. So the first thing I have to do is figure out what this fraction is equivalent to, and it's equal to 5 and 1 third. To then round that number, I'd have to put it on the number line. So this number is between 5 and 6, and I know that it's broken up into 
thirds. So this would be one third, two thirds, and then three thirds is right at six whole. So here's five and one third. I can determine that this is going to round closer to five whole. I would do the same thing with seven, 17 eighths, taking out the whole. In this case, I'm thinking one whole is equal to eight eighths. The reason is, is because I see my denominator is eight. I'd need eight pieces to do one whole. I'm going to do the same skip counting. So I'm going to say eight eighths, 16 eighths. The next eight would be 24. I don't have enough because I only have 17. So I'm going to take out 16 eighths. Again, figuring out my remaining fraction, 17 subtract 16 leaves me with 1 8. You can see that these two numbers, 16 and 1, should add up to give us our top number and the number bomb. So now I know this is 2 whole and 1 8. Here I would draw the number line between 2 and 3. This number line I have to break up into 8 equal pieces. I find 1 8 and it's here and I can visually see this is closer to 2. So when I get all of that work done, I can see my estimate is about 5 and about 2. I add those together and my answer should be about 7. So students are going to follow the same process for B and C, creating a number bond so that their improper fraction can become a mixed number of whole number and re remaining fraction, and then taking that whole number and remaining fraction and putting it on a number line to be able to see what whole number it's closest to for their estimate. Okay, so for part three, we see this word problem where it says Gina estimates seven and five eighths subtract two and a half was five. Dominic estimated it to be five and a half. Whose estimate do you think is closer to the actual difference? So students here should again do some estimating on their own and think about why one would be closer to another. They may want to put their own number model underneath three to help explain. All right, and then here on part four, what they're going to use is they're going to use the benchmark numbers, and one of the benchmark numbers we know is half. And so before on the front, I told you that when we think of the number line, the halfway point between any two numbers is usually a good indicator of what we're going to do with the estimate. If it's less than what we would think of as half, we would round it to the whole number below. If it was more than what we consider half, we'd round it to the next whole number. So I'll show you on the first one how I would think through this. So I see 10 and 3 fourths. What is half is what I have to think about for the fraction. So if I think of fourths, half of fourths would be 2. And I see that I have 3, which is, in the sense, greater than half. So I should go to the next whole number. So I should think of this as like 11 plus, because 10 and 3 fourths I'm going to estimate to be 11 thinking again of what the benchmark of half is. So if I have 12, half of 12 is 6. If I have 11, again, that's above half. I should go to the next whole number. The next whole number here, 12 and 11 twelfths, is 13. Again, if students still need to use the number line, feel free to still add that support in, and that will help them. And then I see here my answer should be about 24. So each time, students are going to want to think about what about half is. For this one, 10, half should be 5 tenths. For eighths, it should be 4 eighths. And again, we've already done 12. Here, they're going to have to make these into um, mixed numbers for the best results.